Jim Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the Jim Joyce. I know, I know. Well, we, you know, we have to listen to our listeners and viewers, uh, and I've gotten multiple requests that they kind of miss in the Jim Joyce. So right. here, here right. it is. Here it is. Here it is. How you Happy feeling today? Year, right? Like we, we did one right before. Um, I know we, we chatted, but. Uh, is this our first one post New Year? It is. It's our first 2021. Right. Um, and, you know, again, like history is being written as we're recording this, like right before this. So this is crazy. I was reading Brian Dolan, who I think, you know, I partnered up with uh, on the podcast. And he also yeah. partnered up with Marty and team. At Health Excel, they're doing a DTX digital therapeutic report. Awesome. Um, so I was reading Brian's um, United Healthcare Group, United Health Group report, deep dive. It's like eight or nine thousand words. I'm reading right. through it, and then I see the news: United Health buys Change Healthcare for something like thirteen, the thirteen and a half. I wrote it down somewhere, but thirteen or thirteen and a half billion. Um, yeah. It's, uh, and that's, it's crazy. Like, like I, I've seen them advertising a ton recently. Is that is that right? Am I, would I have seen them advertising? Ch change or, healthcare? Um, yeah. Or promoting you know, places? I, or? I don't, I mean, you know, they're, they're data company, right? So they're actually, I just saw in the press release, um, uh, by the yep. way, so, uh, you know, today is, I'm running out of like new ones to, to show, <laughs> right, right, but right, anyway. Um, I just saw in the press release, so they're joining the Optum Insights group, uh, which I'm learning quite a lot about. Um, and I think um, the report is only for paid subscribers at Exits and Outcomes. But um, um, uh, the only thing that I will sort of hint out of there, I, this is crazy, a thousand plus subsidiaries that United has. Wow. It's an, it's insane, but it's like, you know, I was just talking, you know, I was talking about them or something. They're like a city state, right? Like they're kind of, they're, they're, they're a city state. I, they're like a country, they're a country of their own. <laughs> just, <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I got I to gotta, gotta drop that down country of their own, man. Um, yeah. Uh, so how, how's your, uh, uh, you know, we, we ended with like me and you, talking and actually I just got I, I had a serendipity call today and um, the person on on the other zoom said you know I actually enjoyed just like the banter between you and Jim much much more not much more but like it's enjoyable part of it so right. hopefully people enjoyed it um, and I love the kind of our focus on mental health um, and hence you know a right. good way to start the year because I've been wishing everybody health happiness and sanity um, for this year. Right amongst yeah. many things. Yeah, um, I think, you know, I, I was reflecting, I, I enjoyed, I actually enjoyed the episode because we, what did we do? We did predictions and we talked about mental health. Um, yep, yep, And, yep. you know, we kind of went deep. We could have gone on for a while, but we probably pushed the uh, envelope of people's Long, attention span. <laughs> longest episode ever. So let's, let's see. Um, though I have to say, I was listening to Tim Ferriss and Peter Attilio one, which is like two hours and 43 minutes, right? I mean, you know, Tim has no like, you know, time concept, like some of them are like 40 minutes, some of them are three hours um, and you just break it up. So hopefully people will actually break it up. It's funny, I just got a text coming in here that my wife is going out to the middle of the Irish countryside to buy a uh, poodle. What? And I, so, yeah, I just got it like, so we haven't had a dog in our house. You know, we've never had a dog a lot because we travel a lot. And so I have to believe that's for um, mental health reasons. <laughs> I have to believe it's a companion. Listen, our, our, our dog Bentley is your coach health's uh, chief emotional support officer. So it's, right. you know, absolutely hanging out. It's important. It's important. I was um, told that these dogs, that one of the big things they have is like separation anxiety. You know what? Um, so uh, we have a Frenchie and Frenchies kind of do this like singing thing like uh, every time we leave, we hear we hear him. So yeah, 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 I don't sure. know if all dogs do, but um, anywho. So, yeah, we're not in like animal health discussions, right? Not not yet, <laughs> though, you know, <laughs> <Animal mental. laughs> um, but um, 
speaking of mental health, uh, back to that. So uh, our next guest, uh, just amazing, amazing individual uh, who we actually gave a little credit and I read some of his stats last time, but let me right. let him in. So this is Joshua Haynes. Um, I met I met Joshua through um, um, Alessandra Solberger of Top Tier Impact. There you are. Hello. <laughs> hey, evening. Joshua. <laughs> Hi guys. Good to nice see to you, man. You. And Jim Joshua, Joshua Jim. In, you're coming in from Berlin, are you? I am. So another American still in the EU. <laughs> That's what I was looking at your background. <laughs> he he's actually listened, Jim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's an evidence. That's evidence. No, uh, we, we're kind of saying we've had like half of our guests have been like, uh, you know, Americans in the EU. So. <laughs> Right. Uh, well, there's a trend there. There's a huge market opportunity. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's, right. an, it's a niche. I think but I just started. I just started telling Jim that uh, you and I met through the uh, the top tier impact. So I had one of my serendipity calls with uh, Alessandra, who started this top tier impact group. And you know, to be honest, I kind of thought maybe it might be even like a scam, even though I got like. But I, you know, I figured eh, I'll, I'll try it. I'll, I'll I'll join. I'm I'm you know I'm brave. <laughs> and um, I know you're much more active than I am in there. You're actually running a lot of the mental health sort of meetings. I know I participated in some of them. Uh, but that's, you know, I think one of the best things that happened through that is you and I meeting. Um, yeah. And, you, yeah. you know, yeah. so that's, that's crazy serendipity. But awesome. why don't you tell us a little more uh, to our listeners, viewers, like where you come from, why are you in Berlin? How did you get into oh. Masawa? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, all of that. All the good stuff. So I was born on a Wednesday. I'll start drinking. At 9.15 a.m. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Kind of steep. Fourth, let me, let me write that down. <laughs> it's important. You're going to need to know these things. There's a pop twist. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I'm with Masawa. So just Masawa. 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 Okay. Masawa. Yeah. Masawa is actually a derivative of the Arabic word for equality, al-Musawa. Um, okay. Also in Bantu languages, um, sawa sawa means you know, same same. If you're from Cuba and you need some more water, you would say mahawa. You know, so, so you can do whatever you need to say. Okay. Um, <laughs> but Masawa is um, the first, we think, mental wellness impact fund. Okay. So what we're doing at Masawa is um, investing in founders, really looking to change the landscape of mental wellness. So investing in a whole wide range of aspects. A lot of them do have to do with technology, uh, understandably, um, but really looking, taking a view that the, the founder's mental well-being and the, the team's health is paramount for really the social external impact that we look for and also the financial returns that we, we look for. Um, so that's, and the impact fund, there's lots of different types of impact funds. That's what we mean when we look at impact, both the internal side and the external side. Um, so I've been in, in Berlin about three uh -huh. years. Okay, I was going to say, Joshua, because you skipped from being born on a Wednesday at 9.15 to Mas yeah. Masawa, right? Where's the yeah. Masawa. Masawa? Yeah. Okay. So, so you, what, you kind of missed happen? quite a lot in between. Yeah. Well, I, mm. I saw that you, you studied Arabic in uh, Middlebury, right? I, and it, my, I, my sister actually went to Middlebury, so I spent a lot of decent time yeah, uh, very in cool. lovely school. That, like, um, so, so give us the Arabic <laughs> Middlebury all that good stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I studied Arabic in Middlebury. Um, I, you know, I said in, in Masao, we're a, a mental health, mental wellness, and we talk a lot about vulnerability and the importance of, of leading with that and through our histories, because that's who we are. We're only one person. Um, I'm not a work person and a home person. I'm not a, just a dad or a husband. I'm also, I work with this, this, this fund called Masao. Uh, my story starts in New Mexico. In northern New Mexico, uh, I was raised by a single mom, um, we then moved to southern New Mexico, Roswell, if you ever heard of it, uh, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, the aliens did land, um, and it's not because they did or they didn't actually exist, it's because it was good for the economy. Right. Um, so the aliens certainly <laughs> did land. Um, but I had a, a pretty rough childhood, um, being raised by a mom who also had issues with depression, addiction, uh, was raised on welfare, went to a lot of high schools, I went to six high schools in, in three years. Um, wow. And but was able to get out. I was lucky. I'm very fortunate to have been born in the U.S. Even though I grew up on, on on welfare, I got a scholarship to actually come to Germany to study as an exchange student in high school, and that really set me on a trajectory for 
being really curious about the world, about systems, about how things work and how things didn't work. Um, so meandered through a number of different careers. I was a software developer. I was in analytics and I was also a diplomat in the Obama administration working for USAID. Oh my gosh. So lots of uh, interesting things. But I, the, 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 I actually the didn't know line, you coded. That's like, that's yeah. completely news to me. But yeah, well, anyway. Now, now I outsource it. But that's, yeah. <laughs> I still yeah, haven't so that's, over, I haven't got over the fact that he was born on Wednesday. <laughs> I know, it's, At nine fifteen. Nine fifteen. Oh my! You know, not me the population. One seven. We, 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 if we knew that, we would have moved our, our recording by like you know about an hour or so. <laughs> exactly. That would have, yeah, that would have been very kind. Uh, every every day I pay homage to, to my mother at nine fifteen. No, nah, just Josh and yeah. Um, but. I was lucky to do a lot of different things, um, work in civil society and for, and for profits and consulting in a, a whole range um, of, of areas. But I never really looked at myself um, and the issues. I, I was dealing with heads of states and heads of big organizations and, and bringing different foundations together to do kind of crazy innovative ways about how we deal with money. I ran a portfolio combined of about 190 million, uh, which is now I think a lot, then I think it was very much, it's kind of ironic government money. Well, we could talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> but it wasn't until I really had a crash and burn um, and um, had to deal with my own issues of really having a, a crazy food addiction. And most of my life, I weighed over 300 pounds. Um, uh, depression, very functional depression. You know, I use comedy, I used humor um, to, to, to really show and, and deal with the demons or didn't deal with the demons, right? That I, right. I, I had. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, because that's just my, my, my coping mechanism. And it wasn't until I was forced um, to, to take a break and look at that, that I really started to be become ag aghast. The prevalence of illness, um, the lack of mental wellness, the investment opportunities that were out there, the technologies that were being developed, okay. and also the lack of focus on humans first and in investing, regardless of if it was mental wellness or not. Right. Um, and so then about a year ago, decided to, to found Misawa, um, and the rest is day by day. And so is the fund, so is it, it classically you sought LPs or is there kind of state yes. support or, you know, where does yeah. the, is it your own personal funds yeah. or where did it, the sources of the funds come from? Yeah. So we take money from anyone uh, who can pass KYC. Um, and <laughs> so what essentially uh, our focus is yeah, taking from state where we're also in the process of, we're a startup fund. You know, we're a year out. Um, we're a startup enterprise. We can't, just because we're the, the investors doesn't mean that, that we have all the power in the relationship with our investees um, and are still in the process of raising for our, our, our first close. We have a couple of investments that we're in the process of doing now on the side as SPVs. Okay. Um, but we are looking at state, at European Investment Fund, um, at um, IFC, also LPs, a lot of um, limited partners who are next gen. So youth 25 to 40, 45, uh, who are managing their family or have a, a chunk of their families, uh, their family offices, um, a, a cap, a capital to allocate. Um, and so um, really also looking at blended capital. How can we also use grants? Um, because there's a lot of risk that we need to take. Most of the c companies we're investing in are in the EU, Europe realm, but we also have a swath that's in emerging markets because that's, um, there's really nothing there, in, even in terms of services or alternatives um, uh, when it comes to increasing mental wellness. And do you look at it like a, like a classic fund that you're looking for a return on investment Absolutely. with kind of social yeah. responsibility or how do you kind of divide that? Right, so we take a three-prong approach. One is org health, one is social impact, and one is the economics. So um, if you look at just the stats um, on org health and why it's, it's so important to um, focus on organizational health. So looking at founder well-being, um, we do a diagnostic, we have a framework to look at, you know, to, to what extent are the founders aware of their mental wellness. It's not saying that everyone has to be mentally well because I'm not mentally well every day. Still, it's mm -hmm. a journey. Mm -hmm. But also what already at these early stages, pre-seed, seed, and sometimes series A, are, are founders and founding teams really looking at creating and inculcating that culture that is positive? Because um, we know that you know, the, the top businesses who uh, have the best employee engagement have up to 10% uh, customer loyalty, are 21% more profitable and 20 more percent, well, 20 percent more productive than those companies in the, bo in the bottom. And that's uh, stats from, from Gallup just uh, last year. 
Um, so it makes financial sense for us to care about the founders. And we know that the majority, uh, I've seen stats around 68% of startup failures happen because something went awry with the people. Mm. Um, and, and so, oh, listen, for the first time, uh, you know, I think as founders, just, you know, watching our own mental health, right, you can yeah. be on yeah. nonstop, right? And actually, yeah. it's funny, yeah. we we're joking around, but for during this holiday season, I think it was the first time in reverse, whereas I was actually yelling at Marina, hello to you from her, by the way, Joshua. Um, and um, uh, I was yelling at her to like step away, right, from the yeah. from the yeah. computer, like from the office, yeah. right, uh, for the first time yeah. ever, I think, uh, actually, yeah. on on that well, note. So, yeah. I think it's um, it's super important. the The question that I would have, because building any startup, right, be, um, sure. is difficult, right. I mean, you you said it earlier. Um, I think off of your website, I clicked somewhere that somebody's keeping a track of, like, I don't know, I forget. Yeah. It was almost like eleven hundred. Uh, yeah, startups, yeah. companies in mental health space, um, okay. and and I'm sure growing. It's a busy, busy, busy space, right? I mean, it's if you think about busy, yeah. just US alone, talk space, Meru networks. I mean, I can keep going, right? Like, keep going. Um, yeah. Keep, yeah. 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 keep going. Yeah. yeah, take a flavor, take a slice. Yeah. What, what, I mean, what are your thoughts? Like, uh, I don't think there's enough professionals, right? Even if technology is involved to help people somewhat self manage, right? Um, like, what what are your thoughts on this like a yep. those founders so let me break this down a those yep. founders building companies need to stay mentally sure. well and then yep. b yep. so many of these where's the labor where are the skills coming from so yeah yeah for us we look at really what's, what's that social impact and one of our social impact um foci fo focuses i won't be too erudite um is um <laughs> it's ironic um is really what's the evidence base and evidence base is coming from professionals, from researchers, from psychotherapists, from psychiatrists, from from the the, the biologists, the microbiologists, the geneticists, etc. The people who do have the, the the FUDs, the PhDs after their their names. Um, and for us, it is crucial that there is a solid evidence base that the general area into which these startups are working um, that it makes sense because we're not gonna we're not gonna invest our money now if we think it's an amazing and promising. Uh, field and opportunity, then we're happy to, to look at, should we help the support, especially for, for pre-seed uh, and even up to seed. So we support some of those RCTs and research mm -hmm. that needs to happen. Uh, and we're definitely, as we're looking for long-term capital, you know, a 10 year, a 10 year um, uh, marriage, um, you know, usually um, we can wait for those five to seven years where that research is really coming in uh, because things will pivot and changes. And so that's why there's also this aspect, this focus on impact that we uh, set the impact goals and targets, at least that the hypothesis from the very beginning is clear and makes sense, and that we hold each other accountable to that. So for example, our carry is actually tied to reaching the impact targets that we set. Um, and, and so that's how we look at the, um, at the impact side. It's, so it's just not about the CSR, or even the ESG side, mm -hmm. but really I think it's a bit more hardcore on the impact. We, we've gone so far as, uh, to the extent of having an impact partner. So someone who has ex like rigorous uh, mm -hmm. research and impact methodology background to come in without a VC background, without a finance background, to kind of jump in and say, no, guys, we need the data to be able to do this, but don't expect it from you necessarily. We've never had one startup come to us with an impact model as good as their finance model. Well, actually, we've never had an impact model, although we work with them on building that, really working it through the theory of change all the way back through to the long-term outcomes. Hmm. Um, and and so company, I, I, go ahead. Yeah, our companies, like if you look at like, say, more sophisticated companies or even companies like the ones Eugene was mentioning or on your yep. big 1100 you know, company, but are they actually, are some of them that are in the space, do they have an impact model? Like, is that, is that a working kind of ESG component somewhere? Yeah, I think some of them, um, deep down, I think a lot of founders feel that they're making a change. Whether they've taken the plunge and putting hard stuff into paper, um, um, terms in term sheets, uh, I think is, is, is more rare, even on the impact fund side. There aren't, um, not all impact funds, um, are, are, carry, are, are tying their, their carry necessarily to impact. They're uh, doing it they're, they're in their own way necessarily. Right. necessarily. Um, but you know, it's also, and I think it's nice that we're a bit self-selecting in the mental health sphere is because if it doesn't work, then people aren't coming back. You can only, well, I take that you can do ad buys forever uh, and do partnerships wherever and get your, your product in every company um, employee engagement handbook. Um, but still, it's pretty clear, you know, for example, um, the, some of the leading uh, meditation has their, um, you know, their stickiness is, isn't as great as it should be. 
especially for a product that's really looking to change people's lives. And that's stuff that we look at and really assess from the very beginning to right. the extent of, can a business actually pivot uh, their their business model if they see that their impact targets aren't being met? Yeah. I, you know, it's thickness wise. Uh, I, I just want to gloat a little bit. I mean, I don't, I don't get to do that. Much, so yeah, yeah. I, uh, I'm just looking at the headspace. Um, we had, I uh, was talking to um, Megan Jones in our symposium and um, I've increased, I'm at uh, 1,127 days in headspace now. So, Great. you know, wow. some days I'm only doing like three minutes or whatever, but at least something to, you know, yeah, I don't know. I, I just wanted to pat myself on the back. You know, that's great. That's we're, we're proud of you, Eugene. <laughs> that's an important for, for you as leading a company and you hold hosting this um, austere and important. No, uh, this, video is, this is this is my mental health break. <laughs> Right. This, this exactly. is it every Wednesday. Actually, I, I mean, you. I have a little task, Joshua. The um, it, 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 so what, so when I was in, I, I've mentioned this a couple times on the podcast. But you remember I did that uh, genome mapping in India that I've mm -hmm. mentioned before. You know, the Health Excel. So one of the one of the scores that I got when they kind of mm -hmm. you know mapped out what are my genetic mm -hmm. tendencies from a health perspective it was the best mm -hmm. uh, clinical point I've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, was they talked about you know, my resilience. So they kind of, they genetically told me my likelihood of having kind of mental health issues or mm -hmm. they gave me like a resilience score. And, mm -hmm. and to be honest with you, I never really, you know, you know, it was like that somehow, you know, that, you know, and I scored okay in that, in that area. But like, is that, is that a real thing? Yeah, I mean, we're looking at companies now that are looking at gene therapy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. to be able to use different aspects um, um, to modify uh, part of the genome. We haven't decided to invest in you know, but there are a number of companies that are coming out uh, right. and that will only increase, uh, especially now CRISPR having one or the people behind CRISPR having won the Nobel Prize um, right. and just the evolution of what we can do with, with genes. I'm not an expert. I'm just reading a book about it right now um, mm -hmm. so I can get a little more educated. <laughs> yeah. But, so um, yeah. So that that's actually interesting, right? Because obviously, I mean, there's always been and have been and this back to I mean, we have a lot of, you know, farm from pharma industry guests, right? Sure. So there's always going to sure. be, uh, you know, a biological intervention. It, you know, it's always going to be we're going to need we're going to know more and more about our own bodies, you know, biologically, mm -hmm. we then, uh, you know, we talk and we're sticking to with mental health. We're then talking about human beings, right? That are trained to help individuals, right? Um, and there is, I would think there's a shortage. So that's why like, I still don't really sure. understand how a lot of these are scaling today. Um, like a lot of these startups are scaling today with, uh, from a labor perspective. And then there's pure tech. So like, you know, a headspace for, uh, for somebody like myself and, and many, I don't really know how many millions they have or com, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. That's self-help. What's what? What are your thoughts on? Let's put the biology to the side between human beings and technology. Yep, yep. Um, so I feel just my given my own personal experience and in one, uh, the mind is an incredibly powerful thing. Um, psychotherapy for me personally was helpful. Uh, it got me in the right direction, but it took a lot of other things really to get me where I was. And, and one of those things mainly was nutrition. Uh, another actually was psychedelics. Um, and so I think you have a, a wide array and I, I, I agree there's not enough. There, there are you know, countries in, in Africa, Guinea-Bissau and Western Africa, um, they have zero psychiatrists. I think 23 mental health professionals in the entire country. Wow. Um, uh, and so uh, I completely agree. It's and because of stigma, because of a lot of the social issues, which is another topic all, all in yep. itself. Um, but I think with um, the, the increase in understanding, the scientific understanding of vagus nerve, in, all the vagus nerve work that's still yet to really be understood. I was listening to a podcast last night with Wim, Wim Hof. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so, believe it or not, it's, the, the science is starting to back a lot of this stuff up. Um, same thing with nutrition, right? That gut brain uh, focus. Right. Um, you know, whether it be intermittent fasting or a certain nutrition regimens, um, holy moly. Um, right. And so I think the scale is, I think it, I don't know if it's overheated, at least the market in the US is, and the market in Europe definitely hasn't. Um, but there, um, it, there will be a reckoning in two or three years, um, especially as if we get to the point where insurance or providers are able to prescribe these things. 
Mm. Um, well, look, Un United so, Health yeah. already owns, you know, uh, a, I'm sure a slew of others, but I'm aware of, you sure. know, they bought Pacifica, Sunvelo, sure. which is now Sunvelo, sure. right? So, I mean, we're going to see a lot more of that consolidation, yeah. I think, in the U.S. market. Um, oh, right, absolutely. And we're seeing in Europe a lot of partnerships. So even pre-seed partnerships that are coming, which is fascinating with insurance companies. Um, when, before products have even launched. Um, and so, because of course, insurance companies, they need to diversify it. They're scared of pharma, pharma, uh, from the, the pills, how do we, you know, you guys know much more better than I do about these things. Um, so it's but the, I, the right place for founders. So so people with, uh, it'll be controversial here for a second, like yeah. um, it, it, you found, founders um, going into, if I, I thought someone had a, you know, major mental health issues, a tendency towards depression, um, you know, something more severe than that, then I wouldn't advise them to go set up a company, mm. you know, um, you know, so unless they felt like they were really had that in control, sure. I'd be very nervous sure. of that certainly if someone, you know, sure. because of the, the sheer, the sheer challenge, you know, the sheer, you know, instability of your business right. model and right. dependency right. that people have on you and the chance sure. of you being put into like really semi catastrophe catastrophe situations you know, yeah. <laughs> you know it's like you know it's like look we're so laughing it off here. jim we're laughing it off <laughs> can't wait to read the book you agree <laughs> um not entirely um we know already that founders are twice as likely to suffer from depression and have suicidal ideations Ooh. right suicide is a huge issue especially in, in tech founders and, mm. and and a set that i read is that they're also 10 times more likely to have bipolar issues um, and I, I've worked for lots of bosses that probably had bipolar. Um, so, but for us, it's more around their awareness of this, the plan, the mitigation, what strategy do they have? Do they have the team on board directly, but also the team around them, their advisors, their spouse, their whoever it is, is because it really is a community that builds these startups and we all suffer and reap the rewards. Um, right at the same time. So I think we, we have to look a lot and you know, also the ability to which you can be vulnerable about that and lead with that and lead with the fact that you have depression, um, um, right. like, like myself. Um, and know what I know very clearly what my triggers are. Um, right. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's funny, what, one of the best advice, it, it, I, I got one of the guys at the system, my board, Connor Hanley, you know, Connor Hanley, right? That did yeah. fire yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he said to me, he said, hey, good, good piece of advice. Now I, I like, I, I, you know, I have kind of, I, I always thank my parents for dropping me on my head when I was a small child, because um, I tend to <laughs> just see the positive on things. <laughs> but, um, but, but the, um, he said, with this company, the, my current company, Health Beacon, he says, Jim, focus on the areas that give you energy. Mm. And I thought that was really, I thought that was like fascinating advice. You know, I mean, obviously people think about that and it's like, you know, there's yeah. some things that you just jump into and you know, within your your role, you know, you can't just do things that give you energy. You have to do sure. things that are that are maybe more painful for you. But focus on the areas because if you get more energy, then you're going to energize the team, and then the team's going to have more, and it's going to be this like wheelhouse of there. And I thought yep. that was kind of. So Jim, I have to admit, when we were talking and you said like your parents dropped you in your head, I, I thought like it was like, uh, I don't know, just in passing, like almost like as a joke or whatever. Now that you repeated it, I believe you. And here's the funny part. And I think this is why this is working, man. When I was like a child still growing up in the old Ukraine, I, I, I tell this, I don't know, maybe I told this a few times, but I actually decided to pick up a rock and throw it in the air to see if it actually will land on my head or not. Guess what? It did, right? I don't, you know, I don't have any scars, and like my family rushed me to a local little hospital or whatever back back in the day. So, just a side note, Josh. Yeah, uh, yeah. I also have had some head injuries. Um, I was older, but I think it, it helps keeps us real. Keeps, us I was, keeps the spirits up. Now that we're going there, I was convinced my I was convinced I could fly at a very young age, <laughs> and I I jumped off my. Um, I jumped off a couch at like whatever, you know, flying through the air and ended up in a hospital with a broken arm, you know. <laughs> I'm still convinced I'll, I'll be able to one day. <laughs> one, one day, that's that's the that's the entrepreneur, that's the positiveness. Right. Right. I love it. Just change some of those genes. You just gotta do some gene therapy and you'll, you'll be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you've made investments. So the fund's been going for a while. You've made investments in the space. We're in the process now of making them now. Yeah, I'm making, we're doing two investments um, and we're still, we have our pipeline. There's no shortage of really great companies, especially that are, are blowing up. 
Um, yep. We are focusing on Europe. Um, I think Silicon Valley Bank last year, at the end of last year, came out with a, a report that about a billion had gone into mental health in general, but 89% was in the US, okay. which is fascinating uh, because, you know, EU, I think, I'm much sorry. Brexit, 89, 80, 89% wow. of the 1 billion that went for mental health was in the US. Okay. Is that, um, I was um, just chatting with uh, Steve Aguilar, who I know Joshua, yeah. I put you in touch. Uh, so yeah. he just sent me their their report. I know you, you know him too, Jim, right? Yeah, he's part of the Health Excel community. Right, um, right, right. right. So um, that was yeah, so 89%. A, a wow. Yeah, went to the US. And so, okay. yeah. Okay, so what's happening to us now then? Uh, what's happening to us now? So I'm not, I can't, we can't say the word on the podcast here, but this, so. <laughs> Number just, one. Ra just raise the just raise the uh well either the you don't have the sign do you right so i write i so okay. you just wrote a p you had a piece or a post i did i saw you know talking about that this the effect of this is going to be generational yeah. so what do you what, yeah. what, what's so. happening to us now i think so so i think we're pretty we're pretty lucky um and probably the people who are watching us are pretty lucky we're figuring this out but for so so many people and not even in America and in our country, but also here in Europe are dealing, of course, with not only unemployment, with um, isolation or too many kids at home and, not the, and just this worry about how are we going to uh, do our work. Our, in Germany, we're now in no schools locked down until the end of January. Okay. <sighs> just going to take a deep breath. But then also the people who have lost loved ones, their mm -hmm. family, their spouse, their, their parents. Mm -hmm. And so that's not something, that, that's not a trauma that we're going to be able to automatically when everybody's, enough people are in, injected with the vaccine that it's just going to release and everyone is going to go back to their happy lives. Sure, there's going to be a eu euphoria and there'll probably be a lot of hedonistic stuff happening. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but that long-term effect um, is really, it is really, uh, it can be generational. If you look at traumas, um, not only in uh, after the Holocaust, after the Rwanda genocide, after a number of, of really pivotal points in, in our history, just in our recent history, how long it takes for people, you know, you can you can actually test this and using epigenetics. Mm. And so it is, I think, I think mental health will be something, I, luckily the silver lining is that we can talk about it a bit more uh, because everyone's facing it. Mm, yep. um, uh, especially as the younger, you know, uh, suicides um, are, are, are up um, in Japan. I, I read a stats that it's the highest it's been in I don't know how long um, mm. because of loneliness. And so that's great. But just because we talk about it doesn't mean that we're going to have changes in the public policy. That's going to take a long time. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean that we're going to have enough investment or focus specifically mental health. But also if we think about it, uh, mental health isn't just a health issue. It's a societal issue because it affects humans. So if we look at climate change, why is climate change happening? Well, it's because of humans, because we're doing a whole bunch of stuff that we, sh we shouldn't be doing it. We're out of balance with nature. We're consuming too much. We're producing too much. We want too much. We want, all. but all of those things, why we're doing it is because there's deep unfulfilled needs that we have of feeling loved and secure and you know, a part of something else. Uh, and so mental health, uh, you could, one could say that at least mental wellness is a part of a lot of the systemic issues that are going on in our societies today, wealth inequality, social injustice, et cetera. Mm. And so that's, you know, I think, I also, I'm supposed to think if I didn't think this, I probably would be in the wrong job, um, that, that mental health uh, really is something that if we don't get a hold of um, um, rather quickly, it's, we're going to have a lot of other issues because it's a systems issue, not just an, a topic issue. Right. right. So, you know, and it's interesting, right? And I think every one of us, I mean, yes, there's specialists, there's technology, both, you know, digital and, and, and biological. Um, I, you know, Jim in the last episode, uh, and I don't have them written down, but gave like a little bit of the scenario of like what we could all do, right, ourselves. But I think one, one of the things that I've been trying to do is you know, just reaching out to people, right? So there's like little things that we all, every one of us can do mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. our neighbors, mm -hmm. loved ones, uh, mm -hmm. even sometimes mm -hmm. strangers, right? Like, I don't know, just I, any, any kind of hacks, tips, something, right? Yeah, yes, all of the above. I think, Eugene, just um, from what I know of you, you, you know, you try to do something for somebody else every day. Um, that's super helpful. You meditate once or twice a day, of course, um, that's helpful. Um, but also thinking about this idea of gratitude isn't just in my head saying, I'm thankful for this and this, 
but really being able to talk about it uh, and tell someone, I'm really grateful that I know you, or I really, just even out of the blue, um, that helps you remember that you're part of something else um, and that we're all in this together because we suffer from comparisonitis, um, where you know if my you know I'm doom scrolling on LinkedIn is oh they got a new job oh they got funded oh get it. what uh, Lord have mercy or Instagram oh, or Snapchat doom or whatever I was going to say doom scrolling on LinkedIn is easy <laughs> like, it's the other it's the other networks <laughs> <laughs> that's it yes. that's, that is that is true doom that is true uh, so it, it, just realizing that wait, th these are everyone's perfect lives like if we could. Right. Flip it, flip the mirror. What does life really look like? It, I think also just being able to be vulnerable ourselves and saying, listen, in, in public for and, and talking about that a lot more openly um, is certainly helpful. Um, yeah. Do you think, do you think though, like this, like, you know, I, I feel like it's an example, like we saw a present, uh, we, at one of the events, uh, we had a presentation from uh, a company that was creating peptides that, um, you know, you know, kind of a, so medicines that you could embed in your food, you know, that, so you could eat the pizza that, um, you know, that cured your diabetes, you know, and, you know, we, and so we, so this is, I, you know, the, the fundamental thesis is like, you know, you walk into a Tesco with a pharmacy and on one side of the aisle, you know, there's something that causes diabetes and then you go over to the pharmacy and then there's something that cures diabetes. Yeah. And, um, and, and so, and it, I kind of with the technology, right. If you look at a lot of these mental health startups with technology, like on one side you have the doom scrolling on linkedin you know that's causing anxiety or comparative itis or however you ever call it the other side Addic you addiction it's head. causing addiction yeah right right addiction and then you have headspace you know on the other side so it's almost like you're you're right. you're, you're being sold two pieces of technology i mean do you, would you have a cynical view on that or what's your what's your take <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, um, it's funny you mentioned, we were just um, chatting with a company today that's really looking at um, um, not demonizing technology because it's here to stay, sorry. Uh, it will only be really looking at shifting our relationship with technology and being a lot more mindful about how and when to consume and when to simply put it, put it away. Um, and so this uh, company, a startup here in, in based out of Berlin, is working on this um, uh, using some pretty interesting approaches, uh, CBT based, uh, but also targeting a number of different specific uh, users, and whether it be mm -hmm. parents of young children, because uh, that's a huge thing, or um, others who you know, Snapchat, Instagram, and you're actually in it, and the, and the therapy is you're on Instagram and you're and you're hearing the therapy and you're like, oh wait, I'm I'm recognizing this is a pattern of this, I'm doing this. Okay, let's go somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think I think it isn't either or um, uh, for this case. Now the peptide-based pizza. Um, I feel like I need some Pepto Bismol uh, after hearing that. <laughs> but you know, I, I mean, th there's there's always two sides to the coin, right? Uh, yeah. You know, if you right. think about all the way back to when the printing press right. was invented, right? I mean, people used it for good and bad. Uh, it's yeah, it's just it's. You know, the, yeah. the same technology is used for, you know, very, yeah, very two different things. Um, sure. uh, wow, we got really deep today. I mean, yeah, I guess exactly. we're, you know, we're talking about brains, mental health. Um, yeah. So what, what's your prediction? So what, like, so when you look, like, give us a prediction here, you know, what's the state of mental health investment, you know, mm. over the next year, you know, maybe next, mm. next two years? Sure. I think, um, it's exciting. It's exciting that it's um, starting to, to catch on a little bit in Europe. I think Asia, Africa, South America are also in the next year, two years, you know, we're looking towards that area as well. From the investor base, I think as more people can talk about it and more family offices, um, primarily, um, especially for because we're, we we're investing in smaller money. So, so we're not looking at institutional investors currently. But as family offices are able to be a bit more honest and the generations are coming up that we can talk a little bit about uh, mental health a bit more and see that it is really a, a multi-sectoral issue and not just a, a health issue. Mm. So that's e exciting. I think it's um, uh, going to be interesting with the race between pharma insurance um, and regulations, just digital therapeutics in, in general. Um, and really here in Germany, we're seeing because of the new digital um, therapy law, um, you have to have some pretty substantial and significant data and only very, very few, or in many countries it's like this, only very few companies 
very few startups, even in addition to that, actually have the data to be able to get uh, approved as needed. And so that's going to create kind of this class of the few startups that are way ahead in terms of getting approval. Um, and then that's going to allow them to go to other countries uh, at least relatively uh, quicker. Mm. So that's some of the, the bets that we're looking at, at making. Um, yeah, and we're hoping that we can also get a lot of people to talk about founders' well-being. You know, for, for the investors, the two investors that you've had, uh, for the two of you, your investors that you had, how often have investors really, not investors that you were friends with, but just investors who are just investors, really taken a concern for your mental well-being? Um, and not only concern, but also said, okay, listen, here's coaching for you. Here's this for you. Here's, you need a therapist. Yeah. You, here's some plans. Let me bring some organizational psychology, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So since we're a health coaching business, you know, that's ingrained in our that's DNA. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. No, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, no one, because, uh, you know, largely financial investors and they have to kind of, you know, they think they're helping my mental well-being by giving me lots of money, you know. <laughs> and then putting incredible pressure on you to value, get higher, higher, faster, grow, 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 grow. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. yeah uh, no, Jim is still I, smiling, though. Jim is still smiling. <laughs> yeah, is it working? How's that growth this last quarter? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, no, but they, yeah, you, you know, no, it's interesting that they think about it. But I, when I, if I think about it, where I sit on a board, um, you know, I'm very, I, you know, I think management, I think building these companies, it's all psychotherapy, right? Like it's all, you know, it's all like it's all that's all you're doing is like you know yeah. you're trying to convince yourself of something, convince clients of something, convince everyone of a better way, convince your team you know, of, of something else and understanding when they're a bit down. I mean, you know, I, I have to say, you know, I don't know how Eugene you're feeling, but like coming back, like, like, I, we, you know, we left the year in a pretty good place. Eugene and I had a toast, <laughs> you know, we got yep. through the year. And then, but I, you know, then we got all this news, like you're just talking about Joshua, like in, with, you know, the lockdowns and, you know, like a, fr a client of mine said to me, you know, his, his five-year-old was not very impressed with Mr. Johnson, Boris Johnson for shutting the schools down, you know, um, you know, flip-flopping on the school policies. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very worried about my staff right now uh, because it feels like the last, you know, until these vaccinations, you know, come into play, how do you keep the energy? How do you keep the connection? You know? Yep. But you know, the, but the, the optimist in me says, even though it's still happening and we're still far away from it, we know much more than what we knew in January of last year. Right. Right, right about the virus right. it, how it spreads the long covid results the you know so right. I, again that that's me saying you know what we'll get out of this right yeah. but right. to your point right. yeah not everybody reacts that way right yeah. No. right yeah. right and also um, this this idea of like you know we play you know we kind of you know i i think there was energy in the beginning of this like it was like almost like excitement about it like you know like growing up in in boston you know like a snow day you know there, there was a blizzard of, 78 we we're all excited exactly. because we had to <laughs> you know go to the store on sleds you know and <laughs> you know like you know but you know there was certain excitement and energy in it and it's kind of going to you know a little less yeah. now maybe. you know I, again I'll, I'll be the optimist here you know when it's snowing and it's cold as hell how many times did, did, did the kids have the hats that actually cover their faces to keep them warm now they have masks right yeah, right I mean, there you go there you go <laughs> I don't know. i'm, I'm, I'm just warm. trying to turn things around <laughs> You know, you don't have to put, you know, the lipstick market really has gone down incredibly. Mm. Like, so you don't have to worry about that anymore. There's a, you're right. There's a lot of really important things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what what anyway. do you guys think about coming up uh, in kind of the market for mental health as you see from your approach, from the digital technology, from the adherence business, um, not just internal, so, internal organizational health, because that's, well, that's your job, Eugene, um, but yeah, also I, I mean, I'll, the, I'll, the larger market. I'll, I'll give you just some some small data points, uh, and I don't remember if we talked about it um, on one of our uh, episodes or not, but uh, we did, you know, a small kind of direct-to-consumer experiment. We're now, I don't know, 500 plus and growing, sure. you know, real sure. requests. 40% sure. of them are from individuals that are looking for mental health help, right? Yep. Um, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable combined with 40% with weight management and the two are tied, yep. right. Brain, brain, yeah, gut. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah. and then, uh, actually about, I'd say three to 5% actual gut health. So people know it. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I, I do think, um, you know, at the end of the day, this is all, uh, behavior driven, right. Uh, yeah. all of yeah. this are individual yeah. and you said it earlier, like, you know, I'm N equals one, guess what? 
everything n is equals n equals eight. one. I know, but everything comes down to n equals one. And what are the interactions and um, interventions and, you know, how do people, so I actually think it's a combination of yes, the technology that will help people to self-help themselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, I do think it's the extension of, um, I, you know, the, it's, you know, selfishly health coaches, right? They're trained in yeah. actually helping people reach their goals. That's not, the, yeah. that's basically the, the core of it is, as I call it, non-clinical psychotherapy, right? And that's growing by, you know, a crazy amount of growth, yeah. right? Just mm -hmm. from people becoming health coaches. Um, that's where obviously we've seen it and we're, you know, investing our time and <laughs> resources and everything else to drive that. Um, and then I do think that good, bad, or indifferent, I don't want to judge yet, but we'll see, especially in the U.S., to your point, I didn't realize that, you know, 90% of it almost went into the U.S. market. We'll see tremendous consolidation. And, you know, and I think part of that is just purely even on the labor side and resources, because, you know, look at Talkspace. I'm sure there's people that love it, but there's also many people that can't stand it. And there's a lot of shit talk about it, right? Like, uh, just as, a, as an example, I'm not trying to pick on them, right? Um, no, et cetera. So I, you know, in short, I, I think it's going to be that back to this perfect combination of uh, self-help, uh, help by professionals and new professions that are growing. But I also think a lot more in the communities, right? I think the community, and it doesn't need to be limited to geographical community, communities of people getting together and helping each other is going to be the, honestly, a salvation, in my opinion, um, just in order for it to scale. Yes. Wow. All right. I'll shut up now. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I won't give a big prediction, but I, but I think it's, it's, the, it's the number one, it's the number one uh, health issue. I, I, that's my view. My view is a num it's the number one health issue. I, the, I remember making a prediction when I first started my first healthcare company and I said, you know, what's going to be, you know, I said, I had a theory and I don't, I didn't know what I was saying at the time, but it was like, that the number one health issue in the future was going to be boredom. And, and really what I meant by that was mental health. And, you know, cause as we solve all these other, you know, as you take away, you know, I don't need to fight for food or basic survival or, you know, severe chronic conditions or are tackled in new and novel ways, then, then you start to look inward and, you know, and so you have this issue of like, what do you do with your time? You know, as you take away, you know, plight and problems from people. Yeah. they seek other things and you know I, so i feel like it's the number one issue it's in everything we do digital health is fundamentally about mental yeah. health and, you know sure. so i think you're in a good yeah. space awesome <laughs> well you. on on Thank that note now that we we we've reconfirmed joshua's approach <laughs> Thank you. And, and his fund so, after almost happy an to hour. Send you my deck. And da, 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 yeah, I'm happy. I think. So, yeah, I'll send you wiring instructions. That works too. Thank you. Awesome. Joshua, it was a pleasure as always. Um, thank you very much. And for the viewers and listeners, hit that subscribe button. You know, this is this is our year. This is our this year, is our year, Jim. This is it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Joe Rogan. Great opportunity, guys. Joe Rogan style. Over and out. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers.